Salatul Jumu'ah, the Jumu'ah prayer. After all other nations, especially the Jews and the Christians, remained ignorant concerning which day is the best day of the week. Allah guided the Muslims to realize that the best day is Friday, which the Prophet peace be upon him referred to when he said, the best days on which the sun rises is Jumu'ah, on it Adam was created and also taken to paradise and on it he was removed from paradise. He, peace be upon him, also said, whoever performs the spiritual bath, then attends Jumu'ah, then observes what has been willed for him, meaning from the voluntary salah, after which he keeps quiet until the Imam finishes his sermon, then prays with the Imam, he will be forgiven all the sins between then and the previous Jumu'ah and three additional days. On the authority of Abu Hurairah, who said the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to say, the five daily salah, one Jumu'ah to the next one, Ramadan to the next, are expiators of sins committed in between them, when the great sins are avoided. And every week on this day, the Muslims go towards the mosque to hear words of advice and to pray the Jumu'ah prayer. This is the Jumu'ah prayer which Allah made obligatory on every Muslim male who is mature, sane and who has no excuse not to attend it. As he, glory be to him, says, O you who believe, meaning O Muslims, when the call is proclaimed for the Salah on Friday, proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. That is better for you if you did but know. The Prophet, peace be upon him, referred to it in his saying, People should desist from failing to attend Salatul Jumu'ah, otherwise Allah will seal their hearts and they will be among the negligent. The Jumu'ah prayer is not obligatory for the females or youth or one who is traveling as well as the sick who might encounter difficulty in attending the Jumu'ah prayer. It is also not obligatory for the nomads and those who live in tents, but they are rewarded if they attend the Friday prayer with others. But if they do not attend the prayer, they have to pray the normal dhuhr prayer. To perform the Friday prayer correctly, the person must pray it in the time of the dhuhr prayer. And a group of people have to be present when performing it, as it is not acceptable if one prays it by himself or with only one other person. This is because the smallest number to be considered as a group is three people. Also, it has to be preceded by two sermons, since the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, always did this, and they are to be delivered in Arabic. If the majority of the audience can understand Arabic and are generally able to assimilate the meaning thereof, this is done in order to facilitate the learning of the Arabic language. However, if the majority of those present cannot understand the Arabic language, then there is no harm if the sermons are delivered in any other language. Since the essence of the sermons is to teach and guide, and not just to deliver a speech, the Imam should refer to the verses of the Qur'an, which must be mentioned in Arabic, if possible, and then translated. Jumu'ah sermons do not have any set of pillars. Whatever customarily qualifies to be a sermon will suffice. However, a well-balanced sermon should include praising Allah, saying the two testimonies of Islamic monotheism, sending blessings to the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, advising the people to fear Allah, the recitation of some verses of the Qur'an and exhortations. It is recommended for the preacher to say the sermons when he is on the pulpit and to say salam to the people when he mounts it. He should also take a break between the two sermons by sitting for a short while and he should also make the sermons short, supplicating to Allah in them. It is prohibited for anyone at the Friday prayer to speak when the sermons are being given. This is due to the saying of the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When you say to your partner on the day of Jumu'ah, quiet, while the Imam is delivering the sermon, you have indeed uttered a useless statement.
and it is discouraged to walk in between seated people except if the person is the imam or he is walking to fill an empty space which he cannot get to except by walking in between them. The Jumu'ah prayer consists of two raka'ah in which the recitation is out loud. It is sunnah to recite in the first raka'ah after the Fatiha, Surah Al-Jumu'ah, and in the second after the Fatiha, Surah Al-Munafiqun, or to recite Al-A'la in the first and al ghashiyah in the second. It is important for a Muslim to be particular to arrive at the mosque on time for Salatul Jumu'ah. In fact, it is preferred to arrive early. If he is late for Salah but catches the Imam when he is in the bowing position in the second Raka'ah, he then completes it as Jumu'ah. However, if he does not catch the second Raka'ah, then he has to offer it as only Dhuhr. This is also applicable to someone who misses Jumu'ah completely due to oversleeping or other reasons. He is to observe it as Dhuhr prayer, that is, he observes four Raka'at. It is recommendable for a Muslim to read Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jumu'ah. This is due to the statement of the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jumu'ah will be brightened with light between the two Jumu'ahs. And it is also recommended to send many blessings on the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as he said, send several blessings on me on the day of Jumu'ah. Because anyone who seeks blessings on me on the day of Jumu'ah will have his blessings presented to me. Furthermore, it is recommended on this blessed day to take a ritual bath and to use perfume. This is due to the Prophet's statement, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. A man who performs the spiritual bath on the day of Jumu'ah cleanses himself as best as he can, rubs oil on himself or perfumes his body, then goes out, meaning to the mosque, and does not separate two men sitting together in the mosque, then he observes whatever is written for him, meaning from the voluntary prayer, and keeps mute or silent while the imam speaks or preaches, will have his sins between that Jumu'ah and the next forgiven. It is sunnah for the pulpit to have three steps in semblance with the pulpit of the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. But it is not a sunnah for the people to sit before Jumu'ah to listen to someone reciting some verses of the Qur'an for them until the adhan that is said for the Jumu'ah is called. Also, reading rhymes and supplications in groups and through loudspeakers is not a sunnah either. When a person comes to the mosque, and the Imam is already delivering the sermon, he should observe two short raka'at before sitting down. This is due to the saying, By the Prophet may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When any of you comes to the mosque on the day of Jumu'ah, and the Imam is preaching, he should observe two raka'at and must not be long in them. The Imam supplicates pointing with his index finger, and does not raise his hands when supplicating, except when seeking rain or asking for it to stop raining. It was reported on the authority of Hussein ibn Abdul Rahman, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I saw the Messenger of Allah made the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, giving a sermon on the mimbar, and supplicating like this, and he pointed with his index finger. There is no special voluntary salah before Jumu'ah, but it is recommended to observe general voluntary salah before the adhan. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Whoever performs the spiritual bath, cleanses himself as much as he can, rubs oil on himself, or uses perfume, and then goes out to observe the Jumu'ah prayer, and does not separate two men sitting together in the mosque, then prays what has been written for him of the voluntary salah, and afterwards keeps quiet when the Imam comes to deliver the sermon, he will have his sins forgiven between that Jumu'ah and the next. After Salatul Jumu'ah, he should observe two voluntary raka'at, as has been recorded from Ibn Umar, who said, The Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to observe two raka'at in his house after Jumu'ah, or four raka'at. As the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, anyone 
among you who wants to observe, meaning the voluntary salah after Jumu'ah, should observe four raka'at, and it is better to observe it at home. When the Eid and Jumu'ah fall on the same day, it is better for one to observe both salahs. However, if he prays only the Eid prayer, he would definitely be required to at least observe Dhuhr. Thus, it is permissible for people residing in towns which are very far away from the central mosque not to return for Salatul Jumu'ah on that day. It has been reported on the authority of Iyas ibn Abi Ramla, a Shami, who said, I heard Muawiyah ask Zayd ibn Arqam, Have you witnessed the meeting of two Eids, meaning Jumu'ah and Eid, on the same day during the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him? Zayd replied, Yes. The Prophet observed Eid in the early hours of the day and thereafter permitted people not to attend Jumu'ah. And he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, let anyone who wishes to attend the Jumu'ah prayer do so.